Now we're moving on to activity two. And activity two needs us to analyze the client brief, read and understand what should be done overall, create requirements, and this should take roughly an hour and a half. What I'm gonna do here is go over the client brief, help you come up with the requirements or the technical specification, and then we're gonna go back and update activity one's log and update activity one's Gantt chart. So you need to read the client brief and fully grasp what needs to be done. You essentially need to detail all the things the client wants you to do. So it's it's kind of like reading it, understanding it, and rewriting it, but using more technical terms, if possible. Have a look at Activity 2 section from the examiner's report. So I will put a link to the examiner's report. And if you guys do not have a copy, please ask your teachers to give you a copy of a previous examiner's report so you guys can see how detailed these answers need to be. So use that as a starting point. Don't just copy what they have done because it's gonna be a completely separate, completely different problem. Combination of the client's needs and your knowledge to enhance the system in whichever way you deem fit. So if you see somewhere where you can make the system better, this is essentially an interpretation of the client brief. Again, your own understanding plus possible additions or improvements to make the system better in some way because they spoke about um, user experience, right? Now, this is completely off topic from this, but just as a quick note, this is the stuff that you'll be needing that I'll be using for this anyway. So a PC with a USB port, Windows 10 or Windows 11, Arduino or Raspberry Pi Pico. I've chosen to go for the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Pico W because that one has Wi-Fi. And I can also use that for BTEC Level 3 IT Unit 19, which is Internet of Things, IoT. I might also use it for other units as well. Um, software, Windows PC, word processor, spreadsheet processor, C programming language, Arduino IDE, Thunny with MicroPython. I'm going to be using um, Thunny with MicroPython. So that video is coming out soon as well. The Fritzing circuit design and or Microsoft Visio. That's what I'm going to be using to design. I'm going to be using this for my design, for my flowcharts, for my circuit diagrams. And I'm going to be using to program Thunny with MicroPython, my spreadsheet for my Gantt chart, obviously, my word processor, just for my editing that template that you're given. Now, from the template or from the exam paper that you're given, it says, by interpreting the client brief into operational requirements, prepare a technical specification for a user-friendly system User-friendly meaning it should be relatively easy to use. It should be somewhat intuitive. You shouldn't, there shouldn't be any guesswork or not much guesswork uh, for a user-friendly system that can handle some unexpected events. So events that are kind of unforeseen, but the system should be able to adapt or should be able to accommodate if something were to happen. So let's say someone got their hand stuck inside of it. There should be maybe a stop button on the inside or on the outside somewhere by the foot clamp, by the hand clamp, wherever, right? Prepare a test plan to check the functionality of the final solution against the technical specification and include some unexpected events. Client brief. Uh, I made a silly knock knock joke here. This is not the client's underwear. Ha <laughs> ha. This is what the client wants you, the engineer, to do. You can think of this as a design brief or a design document. So this is what they come to you with. So this might be some random person off the street who has some money who says, hmm, I want to open this company or I have this idea to do this thing. I need an engineer, an electronic engineer, a computer scientist to design this thing and create this thing for me. Requirements. There are different types of requirements. You need to focus on upper operational requirements or working requirements, things that are required for the thing to work. We don't care if it looks pretty or looks fancy. We need operational requirements. What needs to be done, why it needs to be done, and what will be used to do it. For my students and maybe for you guys as well, I'm going to share this PowerPoint and it has Google search operational requirements definition. So you can actually go ahead and look up what this actually means for yourself. As an engineer, think of ways to produce a system. Think of ways to make the system better, possible enhancements. Example, why would it be better to have an LCD showing a count rather than a single LED flashing when a count increases? So think about that for a second. Let's say you're supposed to count something and rather than having an LED flash every one second or every two seconds or every time something is counted, what you could have instead is an LCD. So a liquid crystal display, so a tiny screen that has an actual number on there. So we don't have to guess and keep counting. We just keep, we can simply look at the LCD and see, oh, it's at 100 now. Come back in five hours. Oh, it's at 5,000 now, whatever the case is. The above links to the user-friendly nature of the system. Yes, so this is a user-friendly system in, in terms of 
it it makes it somewhat easier to use someone doesn't have to stand by the system and wait for the led to flash for it to count they can go away and do whatever they need to do come back and they will actually see a number on the screen that's associated with some form of counting so unexpected events are just that things that are not supposed to happen in an ideal world we must make the system able to handle these typically this is not i repeat this is not the only thing that's uh, for unexpected events. This is just my simple definition. Typically, this can be linked to health and safety issues or a way to stop or restart the system if there is an error. So if, if there's a power failure, it should come back on by itself, for example. And then this is where microcontrollers are really good because you can embed the program on there. So if, if the power goes off and comes back on, it should just start up by itself again. Uh, health and safety, again, as I mentioned before, if someone's hand gets stuck inside something, there should be an easy way to stop it rather than the machine pulling the entire person in. Having a stop button switched, which will halt the entire process until someone can check the system could be useful. Technical specification. So prepare a technical specification for a user-friendly system that can handle some unexpected events. So I have a brief definition here. A technical specification specifies or describes all the technical procedures related to the product development. So someone comes to you with no technicality whatsoever. They come and they describe what they want to you in plain English, Spanish, French, whatever language they choose. You as the engineer, you sit down and think, hmm, this person wants these things to be done. What does that actually mean from an engineer's perspective? Okay, I'm going to have to design a system that can um, stop when someone presses a button, that can count, that can output the count on an LCD screen, that can send me an email every time the count gets to 1 million. Whatever the case is, you as the engineer, you need to break down the description the person has given you into a technical specification. And again, the specification describes or specifies, hence the word specification, it specifies, tells or describes the technical procedures related to a product. So here for my students, again, I have a Google search, how to write a technical specification, explain what a product or a project will do and how you will achieve these goals. Now, you don't have to go into too much detail here. It should be detailed is weird, right? But not too much detail because later sections, we're going to have a massive amount of detail. For example, when we design our circuits, that's going to show how things link up together. When we do our pseudocode, that's going to show how the logic of the system actually works. When, when we do our flowchart, that does exactly the same thing. And when we write our code as well, that's actually going to show also comments in the code uh, describing what each section actually does. 